Hey there. Today I'm just going to do a bit of a short video on lacquering the front of a headstock. So if you wanted to just put a decal on, for example, and not get paint or lacquer all over the rest of it, this is the procedure you'd follow. So you can see I've already got this masked off. Uh, I've got this blue 3M tape, this stuff here, uh, which is great for wherever, you, wherever it meets the edge. Uh, you get a nice fine line from it, which you can't get with a paper tape. Uh, with the paper tape, you'll end up bleeding. You'll end up bleeding under, and you get a, like a jagged line. Doesn't look good. So anywhere where I want a clean edge, I've got the blue tape, and anywhere where it doesn't matter, I've got paper, ordinary paper tape. I've also plugged the tuner holes with some kitchen towel just to stop it bleeding through to the back. Because if you just mask it off, you'll end up it bleeding out through on the back here. So the important things is blue blue tape where you want a fine line, and mask off ev everything else. This is just a couple of sheets of paper down here wrapped around the net to save I've used loads of tape. So I've already applied uh, a couple of coats of lacquer to this to give me a good base for my decal. Uh, but before doing that, I scuff sanded the original finish with 600 paper. This is to give a key to the new lacquer for the new lacquer, so it's something for it to grip onto. Uh, if you don't do that and it's, you're spraying onto nitro onto poly, it can slide off, or when you get pick up a small little scratch, it'll peel, um, which you don't want, obviously. Uh, so I've given it a key and then I sprayed a couple of coats of lacquer, so that's stuck now. And then I sprayed until the sanding scratches are gone, so I've got a nice surface here now. And before I put the decal on, I'm not actually going to sand this anymore. A lot of places will advise you to, to sand before you put the decal on. The problem with that is you can end up seeing the sanding scratches through the decal. Uh, it's not so bad on a natural headstock like this, but if you're doing a black headstock, like a gloss black, and then you sand it and put the decal on, that area underneath will be grey from the sanding scratches rather than black. Uh, so I always apply a decal to a perfect finish basically. Yeah. Underneath has to look as good as everywhere else is going to at the end. And this is what I've got here. So I've got a nice base for this and this is going to be the decal that we're going to be applying. This base was not made by me, it's a restoration. It's made by a guy called Jim Carnes, who sadly passed away since uh, building this. Uh, but we want to give credit where it's due and put the decal on this net. So this is his logo. So this is a step I'm not sure a lot of people do, but I like to, uh, just to make sure I get it straight and not somewhere I don't want it, is by making a grid basically of the masking tape. This is all low tack, so it shouldn't have any problems with the lacquer, and this lacquer has been given a good few hours to dry in as well. Uh, so there's no problem applying this to this, and if there's any residue left over, I'll clean it off with some lighter fluid afterwards. Uh, but anyway, I've created a grid here, so make sure I've got the straight, I cut the straight line across the bottom of the decal here. And this, this this one here runs along with the centre line of the neck, so I can measure from that to get a straight line across the bottom, make sure it's running straight, uh, because it could be really frustrating to find out later that it's a bit of a slant to it that you didn't notice at one point. So I'm going to apply the decal like this and then remove the masking tape afterwards, and it just helps keep it straight. So I've got my water here, this is lukewarm water, I'm going to soak the decal in it until it becomes, it's clear that it's delaminating from the backing, and then I can slide it onto the spot here. Okay, so now I can tell the decal's flapping about a bit in the water, it's just coming away from the backing. So it's ready to go onto the headstock, so hopefully now it should just slide off onto the spot we want. The important thing is to not let it roll over onto itself, because it will stick to itself and then it'll be ruined. So I can see that back line there is on the line of the tape. So we're in position. I'm just going to push the water off it. You get a little bit of repositioning time before it starts to get tacky. And I can soak some of the water off it also, but being very careful not to move it. Watch that did. So now I just need to push out some of the wrinkles, and then I can leave it to dry. And then I'll, I'll leave this overnight, and then I can apply the 
next layers of lacquer on top. So that's on there now. I'll give it a few hours. Uh, I'll probably give this one overnight because uh, it's late in the day now. And then I can spray more lacquer on top, which will help uh, hide the edges and bury it completely. I'll spray the first coat as a mist coat, and then I can build up and get heavier and heavier to the point where I'm spraying on nice big thick wet coats and it'll cover up in no time then. So I've now sprayed that with a couple of coats of lacquer and as you can see you can see, now see the outline quite clearly of where the decal is. Uh, that's to be expected and that's just because the decal itself is higher than the, the surrounding surface. So you've got to bring the level up of the surrounding surface up to above the decal. Uh, to do this you'll spray a few coats like I have done now and then you'll sand this back and making sure you don't cut through into the decal. So you've got to spray enough lacquer to be able to not cut through. And then when you, once you get it flat, uh, so there's no outline anymore, then you can spray some more coats of lacquer on top. And that'll be the final coats then. So now I'm going to sand for 600 and get this decal level with the surface. You can see now the outlines disappeared and everything's leveled with each other. I'm just going to put a couple more coats on this just to make sure there's enough on there when, it, when I come to level the finish at the end. And then we're done. There we go, that's the final coat sprayed now. I've also taken off the masking tape. It's a good idea to take that off before the lacquer fully hardens because it can be brittle otherwise. So leave it a couple of hours after you sprayed your final coat, then take the masking tape off. So now I'm going to leave this for a minimum of a week for the lacquer to harden up, then I can wet sand it and polish it up. And one final tip is if you sand the surface after throwing the first coats, give it a couple of hours, then you can sand the surface with whatever paper you're going to start the wet sanding process with. So, for example, I'll probably start this with a thousand grit. So if you sand it with that, it'll help it dry a bit quicker than it would if you didn't. And but that's it for this one. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe.